Jeremy Clarkson, ladies and gentlemen. What a fine figure of an adult male you present, sir. My uh, haircut will come back into fashion. This is cutting edge. This is Call state of the art. I've just called yours a mullet. No, no, no. I heard that. Yours is... Can I be, can I be brutally frank? Yours is pubic. <laughs> thinning. Distinguished and thinning. You know what? You have kind of grown into your face, haven't you, in your hair now? You know what I mean? Because you used to look a bit weird, but now you look quite handsome. You look rather like Stuart Granger. This is the great thing about coming on this show. It's so relaxing. If you go on party, you have to think of anecdotes. Come and sit here. He's going to say, you're fat, you're ugly, your hair's ridiculous. Well, I there must we admit, go. you are look like you're carrying some. I wasn't going to mention it, but I if I were you, I'd button that jacket up and stuck it in. What's that? <laughs> All right, Jeremy, ladies and gentlemen, uh, has... Uh, well, you've been travelling quite a lot this year. You've been filming in America, am I right? Yes, and I, I went to America a lot, and I had loads of things to tell you about America, and then I got there, and everybody backstage is American. Well, so that's... it's a lovely place. Well, no, no, you see, I'm going to see whether you have... <laughs> <laughs> so when you meet Americans, because you're not a fan of America, are you? Or American I, culture? I... No. <laughs> I don't, well, I don't know, actually, because as you well know, and I'm sure anyone who's been to America knows, it's when you get to that Mr Big Mac who's running the immigration desk, and you know you can't be funny, you can't be cheeky, you have to, because you know that he's going to send you to the back of the queue, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. which is in the Azores. <laughs> and you're just standing there. And this year he said to me in Los Angeles, he was saying, uh, you've, you, you haven't got a number for the hotel you're staying at. I, I, I'm just really, I don't know it. I'm going to need a number. I don't know it. I'm going to need a number. Can I use my mobile phone? Can I, can I ring someone? No, sir. I'm going to need a number. 1,643,912. And you just wrote that down and that was that. He let you in. Let me in. OK, and now I why didn't I get... one million something on Vine. Right, I went to America a little while ago and I was filming out there and I was going in to interview someone for the BBC. Mm. And so they put on the form, what are you doing, work or pleasure? And I put work, thinking it won't make any difference because no, it's for uh, England. No, no, you gave me a week. They They're locked me up. Bottom. I was locked up for yeah. several hours. Yes. They put me in a glass cage. Bottom. And, and no, they didn't touch my bottom. They didn't. <laughs> I've had that. Well, you've had it, because look at you. You look like you're smuggling stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep doing that. Would you please stop doing that? Uh, OK, now, but, you know, I would have thought you would have been a, a dead foot in America because we know you like cars, we know you like performance motors. Obviously, you get them all over the world, but over there, they seem to embrace them. We are now, I think all of us, getting concerned finally about the environment. Really? Yes. Now, you don't believe that. I do so believe it. No, because you said, only just in makeup, I'm going to ban my children from having children and then I won't have to worry about my children's children. Yes. <laughs> only because I don't think everyone else is taking the environmental threat as seriously as I am. No, I've looked at all the evidence <laughs> on the environment. There's a lot of reports and I've read them yeah. all and I've just decided I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> But Jeremy, but how can you be so callous? No, but they say in 25 years' time, if we carry on doing whatever it is we do now and you, the sky will go wrong and the temperature will go no, no, up No, no, hold on. Degrees. It's slightly more complicated than no, the sky going wrong. The sky will go wrong and the temperature will go up six degrees, which will give us exactly the same climate as the south of France. Ooh, <laughs> I'm so scared. Of, and they go, and the, the, Holland will drown. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson. You don't like the Dutch? I like the Dutch very much. They're more than welcome to come and live in my house. <laughs> but why do I care? Or the Maldives. Have you been to the Maldives? No. Oh, that shit <laughs> is, there, is there anywhere you like going to? France, Holland and my house. OK. <laughs> Those three great countries. Yeah, it would be sad if Holland drowns, but if they think I'm not going to drive a fast car just to save the Dutch, no. <laughs> <laughs> where were the Dutch? They came up the Medway, they killed our navy. Jeremy, have you they considered... We lost Suriname to them. Have you considered a performance electric vehicle? Mm, there's no such thing. I have an electric car. I know you do, and it won't get up Hampstead Hill. <laughs> but it's the way forward. In a few years' time, I expect that we will see you driving a rechargeable electric vehicle. You won't. Why not? It's not environmental. Is it not environmental? Well, you come home, you have to plug that stupid little hairdryer you go around in, yeah? You have to plug that into the wall. Mm. Where's it getting the power from to charge it up? From the... A power station yes. which runs on coal. Solar, solar yeah. power. What solar-powered power station? From the sun. 
Uh, all right, let's talk about your new DVD. Because oh, yeah, uh, about this time of year, I always get sent many promotional items. And the one I actually almost look forward to is Jeremy Clarkson's DVD. Yeah. In which he destroys any number of vehicles. Now, yeah. you did last year have a similar DVD out, it has to be said. No, this one, we've really spent some money on it. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean a lot. I've done like 12 of these things now, but this one shoveled money into it. And it's very good. And normally I would say they're rubbish, but this one's very good, I think. Well, there's some very good scenes in it. But once again, you, in, you know, we're talking about American. You're being dismissed from America. And I know it's partly, you know, it's, it's your take on the world. But there's an American gentleman you enlist the help of in this who yeah. not only seems to like the idea of fast cars, but likes guns as well, yeah. which is something I imagine you share with him. Well, not particularly guns. It was very good fun renting the guns, though, because you have to go to one of these Hollywood places where if you're making uh, Saving Private Ryan, for example, you need to rent a load of guns. They just have a warehouse proper full of guns. Proper guns, real working real guns. Real proper working yeah. guns. So I went down to this place to rent these guns, and they gave it to me and they said, you can only have, have them if what you're making isn't anti-Bush or anti-war. Land of the free, home of the brave. <laughs> yeah. That's a weird thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so we've got the guns. Oh, yeah. Like, you haven't heard that before. <laughs> no, no. I don't know. Anyway, we got the guns, and... What did we do with them? I know what. Yeah, then we shot a car. So this was a fellow called Billy Bob. Yeah, Billy Bob. He came along. Actually, he was the man from the gun shop. But he just <laughs> looked like the sort of deep south guy we wanted to go and do this because it was a Toyota Prius. Okay. And I loathe the Toyota Prius. Well, what's wrong with that car? It sounds like a perfectly okay car to me. It, because it does slightly more damage to the environment than any normal car. Oh, really? Yeah, because you've got to have all the factories to make the batteries and make the electric motors for it. I mean, when we were shooting it, they said, hey, you've got to take the batteries out of it in case they burst and there'll be acid everywhere. So if you have a car crash with one of these things and your kids are in the back, oh, my face! <laughs> no, they're rubbish and it needed to be shot, so we did. OK, a lot. so you shot a car. Yeah. A perfectly harmless electric yeah. vehicle. It cost okay. us $13,000. That's... Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy, let's yeah. talk about Richard Hammond. He's very well. He is on the men fully? Oh, he's completely he's okay. on the men. No, I keep him in a jar on my mantelpiece. <laughs> and um, he blinks when he wants some more mashed food. <laughs> what happened? What happened with the car? Why did it go wrong? Well, we just said to him, could you go to York, uh, to an airfield, drive in a straight line and come back again? And he made a mess of it. <laughs> he's just an incompetent driver. <laughs> yeah, he got a, a very nasty biff on the head. And, um, you know, I was... I was rushed up there to go and see him and he was reading Auto Trader. So he was awakened altogether? Yeah, it's fine. And will you have to tone it down for future series? Will you stop doing he's such silly nonsense? He's one of his white and teeth. Yeah. It's the only thing he's worried about. And now, weirdly, I mean, he did... I, I, I don't want to demean and belittle his, his accident. He, he, he did suffer some brain damage. But the only effect is that... <laughs> and he, he, he now likes celery. <laughs> so some good comes out of it? I think so. Jeremy, uh, I love seeing Top Gear. I never thought I would enjoy it. It's like, rather like um, sport. You know, I can enjoy a sporting show if it's funny, uh, because even though I'm not interested in the sport, I don't find it entertaining. What sporting show is funny? Uh, fantasy football used to be funny. What is? Fantasy football used to be funny. They think it's all over. It was a well, very, very funny show. The title I won't watch. OK. I like Top Gear, even though I'm not a big car fan. I don't really see the allure of vehicles. I quite like them, and they're quite nice. Guys, but they're not a big deal for me. But really, that show is just a huge show now, and it's almost exclusively down to you, it has to be said. No, no, it, it really isn't. <laughs> but I tell you what, the really good thing about Hammond's accident, not from his point of view, obviously, is that the treadmill stopped. What's if you, ever, you don't realise that you're on a treadmill. You do the same thing all the time. You come here. Now, I've been on a treadmill, and then suddenly his car went upside down. Uh, Top Gear was postponed, uh, and it's like, OK, I've got you four You were forced to re-evaluate your life. No. <laughs> Nothing that grand. But suddenly for four months it was like, oh my god, I went to do. So I've started to learn the drums. Oh, how hideously embarrassing. <laughs> it's, can you play the drums? No. You have no idea how spectacularly bad I am. <laughs> it's just what? and you think i I you download these things. We keep talking about downloading tonight. You're always up you, it's the end of television. We're mm. gonna be killed if we keep Talk for yourself, about it. top gear, sure, you can watch on a small screen, a show like this, you need the full experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've got much fewer viewers. Anyway, <laughs> many, many fewer. How many viewers do you get? Many more than this. How many viewers do you get? Three fifty. Three, 350,000? Yeah. <laughs> people. <laughs> okay. Million, okay. actually. Yeah, come on. Do you know the worst <laughs> thing? Now, can I just tell you a really bad thing, OK, is when we try to get American guests to come on Top Gear, 
Because it's the, basically they go, it's either you or Parky or Norton or what's that thing in the morning with the grey-haired man, Schofield, whatever. And they all those, <laughs> and we are so low down the food chain. Aww. We are people who sold dogs Aww. to people who live next door to Jade Goody. Uh, Jeremy, lovely to have you here again. Thank you very good much. Good luck with the good, me. the bad, and the ugly. They sell fantastically well each Christmas, they don't do, they? Yeah, yeah well, congratulations, good. and they're great fun to watch, and, they, and I imagine great fun to make. They are, they are very Okay, and please do wish uh, Richard Hammond well for me. I will pass it on. And from everyone. I'll tickle him in his jar. Are you getting tired of people saying to you, how's Richard, and please give him my I've actually got a T-shirt with, he's fine. <laughs> no, no, I really have. It's everywhere I go now. Oh, how's little Richard? <laughs> well, I'm glad he is. Uh, he is ladies and gentlemen, I hope you agree he's splendid company. Mr Jeremy Clarkson. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. That was great, thank you. Jeremy Clarkson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks to all my guests tonight, uh, Jeremy Clarkson, Paul's Courtney Love, Simon Pegg, and David Schimmer. What did I do wrong there? It's f***ing oh. Americans back here. Well, of course. No, you can't go out that way. Go back and apologise. Go and apologise. <laughs>